Hi everyone, and welcome to this final part in the basics tutorial guide from Brushwood Minis. Today we're going to be taking our prime dork from the previous episode and painting him up in a quick, good for tabletop standard. It only took 10 paints, 4 shades and 2 technicals, plus about an hour of your time, not including drying. Let's get to it. We'll start with the skin and I'm using a base of Warg Flesh with a hint of Everland Sunset in it, just to brighten the hue slightly. You want to keep your paints thin during this, as you can see here where I'm adding water to our mix. Remember, we're using that Xenophil Prime from before to help provide our highlights, just be careful not to turn it into a glaze. We'll now begin applying it thinly on all of the flesh areas, trying to avoid the teeth on the face in particular. Notice how I'm not being overly careful here. I want it to flow into the recesses slightly, and any mistakes I make I'm happy to tidy up as I progress through the model. With the skin done, we now move on to the tunic, and here I'm using Eclipse Grey, but any dark grey will suffice. Just remember to keep it thinned. I'm using this for the boots too. One thin coat in this case. Sorry Duncan. Next up, Mephiston Red for the trousers, shoulder trims and surround of the belt buckle. You'll notice my mistake hitting the toe of the boot, but I will correct that in a couple of minutes. We'll also be using this for the eyes. Be very careful, rest both elbows on the table if you can to help steady yourself. Ideally you want a brush with a good sharp point here, but not necessarily your smallest one either, as you can see. Now we're going to be using Rhinox Hide, Mournfang Brown and Dryad Bark. As always, keeping it thinned. Here's the Rhinox hide for the belt. I'm using the Mournfang Brown for the pouches. And the Dryad Bark for the axe handle. For most of the metals we're using lead belcher, not forgetting the little rivets on the red shoulder trims.
bolt pistol and axe head though, I'm going to mix a little of the Mornfang brown in to add that more weathered metal look. Then I will use a little black to paint the barrel of the gun in again. For the helmet horns, skull motifs and the teeth, I'm using Ushabti bone. Now it's time for some shading. I'll be using Seraphin Sepia on the skulls, teeth and horns, a foamy and camo shade on the skin and a 3 to 1 mix of Nuln Oil and Agrax Earth shade, slightly thinned with some Lamia medium across the rest of the miniature. You can see me using the Seraphin Sepia here on the skulls. Here I'm mixing the Null Oil and Agdrax with the medium and I'm then washing this over all of the mini, being careful to avoid the skin. Finally for the skin, the Ephonian Camo Shade. Be wary of pooling with all of these washes and use your brush to mop up any excesses that you don't want. Remember to also allow plenty of time for these all to dry, roughly 20 minutes. Now for the basing. I'll be using Sterland Mud texture paint here. Just place it onto the base and gently push it around until it is completely covered, being careful not to touch any of your painted figure. I'll then be gluing a couple of small rocks to the base with some PVA before leaving this to dry completely. You could always use small pieces of cork painted here, but I always think nothing looks more like a rock than a rock. Once dried, I'm going to dry brush some Ushabti bone lightly over the textured surface. Load your brush with some paint, then remove the excess on a piece of paper or kitchen towel till hardly any leaves the bristles. Then gently apply this to all of the raised surfaces on the base. Once that's dried, I then apply a quick wash of Agrax Earthshade over the base, deepening the shadows and toning down the brightest of our highlights. I'll then paint the rim of the base black, before finally adding some green tufts by Gamers Grass. That completes the painting tutorial, and I hope you can see that whilst not a standout display figure, this is perfectly acceptable for a good tabletop standard. This method is particularly useful to use when batch painting, as you can move between the figures quickly with your various colours and washes. It's surprising how great results can be achieved so quickly when you compare it to a space marine that 12 year old me painted back when I first got these orcs and Gretchen. It's also a very useful method for mapping your light and shade areas as I did here with the cave troll mentioned in past episodes. This now completes our tutorials for the very basics in miniature painting. If you found them useful then please hit that like button and subscribe for some of the more interesting painting guides that I have coming up such as the Marvel Crisis Protocol figures. Also, I'm hoping to continue my work on the Mansions of Madness minis, and not to mention exciting new Kickstarters such as Frosthaven and The Witcher which are coming in the future. There will also be more content on the website for you all to peruse. But until next time though, bye for now.